Hello, everyone, and welcome to Embracing Your Essence on Lilydale Radio. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. And as you are joining in, please do say hello where you're from. Make any kind of comments you'd like to make. And I am, as I said, Colleen Vanderzyden. I'm a registered medium at Lilydale Assembly. I'm also a certified intuitive life coach and every week on this show I talk about something that can help you live your best life and today we are going to be talking about messages from your soul and your soul is communicating with you all of the time. We sometimes don't hear it but the soul is communicating. We're going to talk about a few ways the soul does communicate with you so you can get some more clarity and so you can pick up on that guidance and I'll also do some mini soul readings tonight so that will be fun won't it? Of course it will. Okay, let me just take a little adjustment here on my uh, comments section. There, I fixed it. Good. Hi, Denise. Nice to see you and Susan and Pamela and Sherry and Connie. I'm going fast here. And Amanda and Zena. Oh, I'm just always going to love your name. That's just the way it's going to be from now on. Uh, and Shannon, I said that I think already. And Amanda and Carrie, hello. Thank you all for saying hello. And hi, Ashley and Tina and Ashar. So we are going to be talking, as I said, about messages from your soul and I will be doing some uh, soul readings mini soul readings for us tonight hi Sam and Laura and April uh, before we get to all that we got to do the details of course so here's some exciting news maybe we hope uh, I have heard that the lilydaleassembly.org official website should have the upcoming summer season workshops on it by Friday I don't know if I'd hold my breath on that, but I've heard that's what's supposed to be happening. So if you are looking forward to seeing what we're going to be doing in Lilydale this summer, uh, hopefully Friday you can do it. Cross your fingers. That's what we're going to do. So lilydaleassembly.org is where you can find all sorts of information. The official Facebook page is Lilydale Assembly Incorporated. My website is ColleenVanderzyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com. And I mentioned my retreat last week, a Reimagine Your Life in-Person Retreat. It is a Lilydale preseason event, uh, June 2nd through 4th. And if you're interested in reimagining your life and creating the life that you really want, the one that is beyond your imagination, imagination right now, that amazing life that you deserve, we are going to be doing that June 2nd through 4th. So you can check that out right on my website. Right at the top of the page, it says, join us for the Reimagine Your Life Retreat. So you can check that out. Let's see what else we've got down here. I'm going to say hello to some more people as you're coming in. Um, let's see, see, see. Okay, I made it to there. Hi, Linda and Julie and Fran. Hi, Fran. I did see your message. Wasn't that interesting? Um, hi, Debbie. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I didn't know what I was going to talk about necessarily yesterday for tonight um, and I was talking to Ashley my wonderful assistant and I was talking about the soul and I want to do soul readings and then we got on this topic and here we are and that's today spirit gave me lots of information to talk about for you so hi Kathy and Zelda another Z name Kimberly Kathy Adriana look at everybody and Jenny nice to see you and Allie okay so we got lots to do lots to talk about tonight uh, let's see what else do I have to tell you thanks for getting me past 4,000 followers on Facebook Book. Very much appreciate it. If you have not followed me yet, please do so. Colleen van der Zyden, medium and intuitive life coach. That's where we are right now. Now, if you are on Lily Dale's page or if you are in the spiritual growth and support group, I cannot see your comments. So if you want a reading or if you want to make comments or ask questions, you need to get over here to my page. Yes, Linda, I've got to learn more about those planets lining up. I really do. Hi, Elise and Michelle and Carol. Lots and lots of awesome people here. Thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm really excited about this topic because Spirit gave me <laughs> lots of information to talk about today. And one more thing I have to tell you, and then we're going to get to it. One is, for those of you who are interested in uh, an appointment with me, I finally have added more times to my online scheduler, and so now you can make an appointment. Um, I've got openings all the way through uh, like September 2nd or something like that. So there are openings there all day long. People have found out I've got it going and I'm getting lots and lots of appointments. So if you are interested in an appointment, that's where you can go. Other people um, as well uh, have online schedules at Lilydale. So of course, go to your favorite medium, whoever it is. You don't have to go to me just because I'm talking to you. Lots and lots of us over there to play with. Hi, Nancy and Hank and Amy. So I think I covered everything I need to do while you're all joining me. I'm so happy you're here messages from your soul 
So today, what I want to do, I'm going to talk about the soul and some thoughts on how the soul communicates with us. And I'm going to do, as I said, some mini soul readings. So you do need to be on my page right here um, so that I can do uh, readings for you if you want one. Uh, but obviously, not going to get to everybody, but I'll try to get to as many as I can. Um, and with that soul reading, I might give you some intuitive guidance. Who knows where we'll go? And as I'm going, please ask questions. If something uh, catches your interest, you want to know about more about it, ask right away. And what I may do is if I have too much information, I could just finish this show next week and we'll just give as many soul readings as I can. Lots of options. So we'll see where we end up. So what we want to do is get more clarity on our soul's guidance and then act on it, right? We want to know what our soul wants. We want to know where our soul wants us to go. And our soul is always trying to help us. It's always trying to point us in the right direction. And now remember, the soul is connected to the divine universal flow of energy. You know, we are connected to the big energy here so we have a lim limitless access to guidance here so we do get messages all of the time and so how do we know when the soul is communicating with us like how can we tell um, how does it communicate how can we better hear this and part of our problem in not being able to hear it or recognize the voice of our soul is that we have been conditioned, and I've talked about this before and I will continue to do it, we have been condi conditioned to think, to figure things out. We have been conditioned to focus on our physical lives to such an extent that we have forgotten to tune into ourselves. And we might have some feelings like we need to do something. You know, I'm sure you've experienced this. You feel like you're supposed to do something, but we ignore it. We ignore that guidance. For example, uh, you know, might know you need to leave your partner or uh, break an unhealthy habit or leave a job or something like that. You know at some level in your body, in your soul, that you're supposed to do this, leave. But what do we do, right? We ignore it. We talk ourselves out of it. We put it off until later. Uh, you know, someday later on, that's what we do. So on top of all of this, with this conditioning, we've also learned to doubt ourselves. We don't trust or believe in ourselves. So what's happened is we've become disconnected from our soul and its guidance. This is what's happening. Okay, it's not your fault. I'll, I'll say that a hundred times too. It's not your fault. This is conditioning from society, uh, you know, cultural, etc. So this is not our fault, but we've learned to disconnect from ourselves. Hello, everybody who's saying hello. Um, so thank you so much for joining me. And if you are just joining in, I'm Colleen Vanderzyden, and we are talking about messages from your soul, and I will be doing some soul readings as well tonight. So we have learned to disconnect from our soul. We have been focused on the other things. So of course we don't know when our soul is talking to us. We haven't figured it out as well. But you probably know sometimes that you may have recognized something is guiding you, something is giving you some kind of communication. Okay, so now what I want to talk about is what motivates us to reconnect to our soul, right? What motivates us? where we go, okay, wait, there's got to be more to life than this. Sometimes what happens is we have an experience, a tragedy or a traumatic event, or something that upsets us enough that we begin to look at life differently. When the external parts of our lives are stripped away, the, the important things, in quotes, that we used to think were very important, get stripped away, and our physical world changes so much, there is nothing left except our souls. And so if something happens in our lives and we lose things or there's just so much change and we don't know what to do and we can't fix the exterior and we can't fix those external circumstances, etc., this is a time that sometimes we might wake up and become more aware of our soul and its guidance. So this could motivate us to reconnect to our soul. Sometimes we just feel like something is missing. You know, our lives might look great on the surface. Uh, we have we're successful in our careers. We've got a great family. We've got a beautiful house, the cat, the dog, all of that stuff. And there's really nothing wrong with our lives, except that we feel like something's missing. There should be something else. Things that used to make us happy are no longer doing that. So sometimes we have that feeling, you know, life could be fine, but there's just feels like it's not quite right. Okay, so something is missing. That could motivate us to start a discovery journey to figure out what's missing. And usually that's taking us back to our soul. 
Sometimes also we get this feeling we need to move into a more spiritual direction. You know, uh, in some ways the soul is guiding us and, and we want to maybe some people go back to the church they grew up with in or they go and join a, a church or maybe they, they start developing their own personal sense of spirituality, uh, becoming interested in you know different kinds of religions or parts of different kinds of religions maybe they want to be kinder uh, maybe they're interested in metaphysical topics you know the crystals the healing mediumship etc uh, maybe yoga tai chi those kinds of things so we get drawn to certain things and this is really your soul leading you in a direction strengthening that connection sometimes we just feel like we need more joy more meaning more purpose and all of these things I just mentioned are all signs that your soul is actually calling to you. Your soul is trying to get your attention. It wants you to reconnect and listen. So if you've experienced something in your life where you feel anchorless and lost, or maybe you just got that feeling that there's got to be more to life, or maybe you're questioning what is your purpose, this is your soul calling you. <clears throat> Now here's the thing about the soul. The soul doesn't communicate through thinking, figuring out, analyzing. It doesn't communicate that way. Part of our program and conditioning has been to figure it out, think, analyze it. That's what we were taught. But that's not how the soul operates. The soul operates through feeling. If you feel like something is missing, that's a message from your soul. If you feel like there should be more to your life, another message from your soul. You feel drawn to certain ideas. Same thing, right? You feel like you need to do something differently. Isn't it amazing? And I'm going to check your comments because I saw some good ones going by. Absolutely. Yoga. Yes. Happened to me, Julie says. Yes. So now, what happens, right? Everything's based on feeling. Lots of times our feelings are not pleasant feelings, and that's when we realize we have to connect with ourselves to do something differently. But also, when you get a soul message, when you get that guidance, when you get that intuitive moment where you think, hmm, this is interesting, there's a certain feeling attached to that as well. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the different ways the soul will communicate with you. Feel free again to ask questions here. And if you are not on my page, Colleen Van Der Zyden, Medium and Intuitive Life Coach, and you think you want to uh, check in for a reading in a little bit, or if you have questions or anything, comments, you want to be on my page rather than the other pages this show has been shared to. So I'm going to talk about some different ways the soul's messages can come through. And I'm going to talk about how it feels a little bit when you're in that flow. And I'm sure you will, you will understand. Uh, and that I know, even though if you think you've never experienced a soul's message, I know that you have. I know this 100%. So we're going to kind of re-familiarize yourself with that. Okay, so now the soul's messages can be subtle nudges, right? These passing thoughts, just passing thoughts. They go through your head out the other side. You know, lots of people ask how they can improve their intuition. And really what your intuition is, is listening to your soul and listening and following that guidance. <clears throat> Zena, what does it mean when we have a deep connection with a certain individual? Very difficult to break the thought and connection from them. There is a tied bond. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, and you wanna, do you wanna break the connection with them? Um, deep connection, I'm writing it down because I might have to come to you, of course. Um, break connection, I'm writing that down. Let me know if that's what you're thinking. Um, several deaths of close people, separation of spouse, just cannot seem to find my way, right? There's a lot of change happening now and a lot of people losing people. It's, it's not fun at all. It's horrible. Um, and it can be really hard to uh, get back to ourselves, but it is possible. And the soul is going to help and the soul always does. Okay, I wrote you down too. Um, 
<laughs> Connie, mine have been so deep about a family member that I knew I should have listened to my inner self. And that brings up a good point, Connie, because we do get those messages and sometimes we don't listen to them, right? We just don't. We submit, we dismiss them, we set them aside, we ignore them and all of that stuff. And then sometimes we feel guilty for having done that. But this is just another opportunity to learn more about ourselves. So now the soul's messages comes in with that, that subtle nudges, intuitive things. It's like an intuition, a gut feeling, passing thoughts. Now, when we get these messages, these subtle thoughts, these intuitive moments, that energy is not the voice of fear. Okay, the message will come in and it might be subtle, it might be calm, it'll be centered, it'll be very factual. You know, I always use the example of you need to get milk on the way home. That's it. It's not you need to get milk on the way home and you're all frantic and all aggressive and that kind of thing. It's not that energy. Uh, the messages from the soul are calm, straightforward, no emotion attached. That doesn't mean you won't have a message and then have an emotional reaction after. Okay, if something comes in and you, you think about it and you recognize whatever it's, it's telling you and you go, uh-oh, you know, I've got to fix this, right? Okay, I'm going to backtrack. I just got to see. Goodness me, lots of comments. You guys have so many comments. Um, I love it. I love it. Could this be Twin Flame? That's what pushed me into awakening. Maybe. I'm not. How do I tell the difference between fears and warning from spirit? That is how, Lois what I just said, fears and a warning from spirit. A warning from spirit is going to still come in with a factual sound. The facts, it's, it's calm. Fears will come in like, oh no, they're not home, they're gonna die. They're in a car accident. They're, they're, you know, they jumped off a bridge, whatever it could be. Like, you know how our minds makes up all sorts of stuff, right? Um, that's a different feeling. If we're talking about intuition and messages from your soul, they're gonna be calm. Okay, very calm. They, so if, the more you get to know yourself, and we'll talk about self-awareness a little bit, the more you get to know yourself, the more you'll start to know the difference between the voice of fear and the voice of your soul. Yes, I know, and, and, and Ashley, I know we can't speed up the grief process, but what are some ways to get back to ourselves? Yes, let me write that down. Back to ourselves. After grief, I've got a couple thoughts I'm writing down for you guys already. So, okay, so Zena just had a falling out. Okay. Um, oh, yes. Okay, Shannon, you died, almost died a year ago, then lost your significant other. You meant to do something, but you're not sure what. Okay, so let's take a moment and pause for two seconds. And then I'll get back to my notes here. And again, like I said, if I don't finish everything tonight, I will finish it next week and I'll just review whatever I talk about tonight because I do really want to touch in with you guys and give you guys more soul readings this week than I did last week. So Shannon, I'm going with you right now. So here's the thing. And part of this is going to be a soul reading and part of it is also going to be intuitive guidance that comes in, okay? Because for you, you've had a lot of change. You've had a lot of, you've lost your significant other. You almost died. You, so you had a pretty much a near-death experience, right? So that is really a calling for from your soul that it's time to be living the life you want to live and your soul is always providing you with guidance so if we've had big losses and those kinds of things how do we Ashley's asking right how do we get back to ourselves how do we figure out what we're meant to do and so much of this is is um, being able to give ourselves a break and not force ourselves. Part of our physical existence has been forcing ourselves to power through. Uh, society does not like when we are in grief longer than just a little bit about a little bit of time. They don't. It doesn't like it. People don't know what to do with grief. They don't know what to do with loss. So it's kind of like, okay, you're supposed to grieve for this long, and then you're done. And you know, you'll you'll be going on. It could be three, four, or five months, and people are like, well, aren't you over it? yet I mean how rude is that and thoughtless so we have to in this case make sure we are aware of how we are feeling and what our soul says now Shannon I know that at your soul level uh, this is fun I'm actually seeing colors for you uh, right now and the colors I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of silver okay a lot of silver silver to me is a is a uh, spiritually connected color I feel when I see silver frequently um, varies but frequently 
I feel a direct connection to the divine energy. Okay, so I know, Shannon, that you are very strongly connected to the divine. This includes angels, guides, God, whatever you want to call that energy. It also includes, in your case particularly, connection with our loved ones on the other side. You have so much guidance coming in for you. And that silver is also a sign to me of strength. And it's a sign to me of you being able to, and you may not feel this right now, but I know you have this, that being able able to connect and get that guidance and trust the guidance. So much of life now is for us to learn how to trust our souls. And that's partially, I think, why I'm talking about this tonight is because if we can see how the messages come in, what it feels like, we can cultivate it so we have more of that feeling so we can trust. Lots of times people think they, they you know, like you're saying, Shannon, I know I meant to do something, but I'm not sure what. What? Our humanness wants to know what our next steps are. Our humanness wants to know what our big purpose is or our little purpose. We just want to know what we're supposed to be doing, right? We think at some level in our body that that's going to make us feel more comfortable. So that's why sometimes I'll get people coming to me and wanting more psychic information going, well, is this going to work out the way I want it to, you know? And sometimes it does, you know, and sometimes I can give them that reassurance and other times spirit or the divine energy says, no, they need to figure it out for themselves. So we never know. But I know with a hundred percent, Shannon, that you have this ability to step into that trusting and knowing that you're going to be guided. I also have to tell you, and I had no idea I was going to say this, that you have a guide around you right now. And I know you said your significant other passed. It is not that person, okay? It is a more spiritually, uh, spiritual guide, you know, like an angel or a spirit guide, okay? So you have a guide around you right now who has been around you for a little bit of time here, actually, since you, since you had your near-death experience. And this guide is the one who is um, kind of keeping you upright, if you will. Okay, you, um, a, a very wise guide, uh, and I would expect that you have, have had to have heard or experienced or known things that just popped into your head inexplainably. You just, things just came into your head. This is your guide speaking through your soul. And if you tell me no, that you have not had that, I will be shocked because I can feel it a million percent. So I know that you've had these experiences where you just knew stuff. Okay, so your channel, if you will, is opening up for you to discover your purpose or whatever you're supposed to do is really you just trusting you're going to be shown where you're going to go and you allow your channel to keep opening more and then the answers do come to you. Okay, so I kind of went on a couple different tracks there with you and a little mix in there with the grief part, but didn't totally finish the grief part, but I may come back to that as well. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm checking the comments and I'm going to get back to my thing. A dinner bell just rang. I think my dad's here. I love it. Yes, Katie, stuck in the wanting to know, right? I, and it's so human. And, and I myself have gone, not recently, of course, have gone to mediums and because like, please tell me this is going to happen. Please tell me. And sometimes they tell me something. And, but we are not 100% mediums or psychics. We are not 100%. We could tell you something and I could be like, I know this is right, but something might change in your life and it doesn't happen. So what if we instead trusted our soul? What if we trusted that our soul is going to give us the messages that we need? That's really what we're talking about, isn't it? Um, Julie, sometimes I feel I'm pulled in a few directions by spirit. Yes. Um, yes. Um, listening to the soul will tell you where to go with that. Okay, let me get back to my little notes for a minute and then see where I'm drawn next because you know I want to do that. Um, so I talked about the nudges, the intuition, and now here's something really fun. Sometimes, you know how we don't pay attention to those nudges? We don't pay attention and do what we know we're supposed to do. You know, sometimes we just kind of ignore these passing thoughts. So if we don't pay attention, what happens? They actually, these thoughts or nudges, become louder or more repetitive. And you may have noticed this. So maybe you've noticed some, you've or experienced some of these repetitive thoughts. You have an idea or a thought, and it sounds interesting, but you don't pursue it. And then the idea gets more and more persistent. You know, years ago, I wanted to write a book, and I'm talking many years ago, 26 years ago or something, 27, I don't know how old my daughter is now, but way back. 
And I kept getting this message. You got to write a book. You got to write a book. You got to write a book. And I kept setting it aside, setting it aside. And finally, after 20 whatever years, I finally did it. And it was because that message got louder and more persistent. So I had to make a decision. So if you get a message or an intuitive insight or something that comes in, and it keeps getting louder, you're not going to miss it, okay? We might think we're going to miss it, but we're not going to miss it because your soul is just going to get louder and louder until you have to do something about it. Now, you have free will. You could literally go, no, I'm not doing it, and set it aside. Now you've got a conflict between your free will that says, no, I'm not doing it, and your soul that wants you to do it. The soul usually wins, but not always, so you got to pay attention. And now here's the thing, if you have one of those thoughts that's kind of been in the back of your mind and it's, it's still there years later, when you take action on that thought, the energy flows. You're saying to your soul, I hear you, I'm listening to you, I'm taking action. Then you're in that flow of the soul's energy. It doesn't mean everything's always going to be easy. It doesn't mean it's going to be smooth sailing all the time, but you'll keep going because you're living from your soul's message, your soul's guidance. So you'll keep going. You'll have that strength and you'll be able to do it. And what will happen is you'll be guided by your soul and you'll be in that flow. It's really cool. Okay, check in the comments again and seeing who grabs me now because you know somebody's going to grab me right now. Uh, <laughs> okay, yes, Jamie says they get more intense. Yes, they do. Trust is the way. Why is my ability to channel not consistent? That's a good one, Nancy. Let's go there. And I'm sure I've skipped some of your comments, but there's a lot here, you guys. So Nancy, sometimes, you know, when we are particularly first starting out on a spiritual path, or we want to improve our intuition or, or listen to our soul, as we're saying tonight, it's not consistent because you're human, number one. Okay, you're human. Okay, we were not brought up. I don't know anybody yet. I'm sure there's somebody, but I don't know them yet. Who was, I don't know anybody who was brought up to pay attention and truly check in with their soul and find out how to trust themselves, how to be consistent, how to really be there. And really, as I go through some of these different ways that you can uh, connect with your soul, as I go through this, you'll start to see when you waver a little bit, when you get off track a little bit. It's not your fault. You're not doing anything wrong. Okay, you're not doing anything wrong. You're human and we need to just practice it and play with it and all of that. The more we know about how the soul communicates, that's better. Now, Nancy, since I'm talking to you, let's give you a little mini reading too, right? Okay, I'm going with colors for you too. I guess I'm coloring today. Um, and you know what I'm getting for you is blue. Okay, now here's a little bit different thing for you. Blue and the soul color to me usually means communication. Okay, being able to speak. And I am wondering, good idea. I am wondering, there are so many different ways to channel, right? Sometimes we think about people who speak like mediums. I'm talking, you know, I talk. Um, but I also write. I do a lot of writing, channeled writing through. I used to do channeled art as well. And I'm wondering, Nancy, what forms of channeling you do, because I want to see you doing other things as well. I want to see you doing some writing and just writing things through. Lots of different ways to channel, so play with different ones there. That blue color with your soul is communication, so there, there, it, this channeling is important to you. You could be channeling healing energy, right? Okay, there's lots of things you can channel. You can channel love. You know, lots of times we talk about channeling and we're talking about getting messages from the other side or from spirit guides and those kinds of things, which certainly are channeling. But if we channel other things as well, that's going to strengthen that channel for you. Uh, one more thing with you, Nancy, that I'm really liking. Uh, you have a very good presence about you that really helps people kind of calm down. You must be one of those smoother over -er people, as I like to call it, you know, who can take a conflict and diffuse it and help people kind of calm down. I have a feeling that's really uh, part of what you do, and you're very good at it. And um, you do take on a bit of stuff because you are an empath as well, um, but you've gotten much better over the years and you're not doing it as much. So playing with different ways of channeling is going to help. Hmm, how interesting. 
That was a fun one. Okay, hope that was helpful for you. Uh, I wish for clarity for when and where. When I ignore my intuition, something bad tends to happen, Mary says, right? Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay, Colleen says, why do the nudges only come up around certain people? Is this normal? I have a theory that's coming in right at this moment. Okay, um, that, how can I put this in English? Okay, so for you guys who may, may not know about me, I'm a professional violinist. When I am playing an orchestra, in the orchestra, and if I'm sitting next to somebody who plays really well, I play better. If I'm sitting next to somebody who doesn't play very well and makes a lot of mistakes, my playing becomes a little bit less secure. So same thing with these nudges and these intuition. You may be around certain people that, and there's a couple different ways I can look at this for you, okay? One could be that those people have a higher vibration, if you will. You know, they're more intuitive themselves, uh, that kind of thing. And so you're picking up on that energy and your energy is merging with theirs. If your energy and their energy is similar, they'll merge together and make yours stronger. And we'll see that kind of thing when we all get together in a workshop and meditate in a group. The meditations will be so profound because all of our energies are merging. Another thing that could be happening, Colleen, is that your soul is giving you nudges of protection different ways to protect your energy around other people. So somebody maybe who is troubled or uh, causes a lot of problems in the family or whatever. So your soul could be stepping it up and trying to protect you, get you back in your energy and not affected by others. So I've got two things for you. One is you could be with people who are higher vibration or similar to yours and your energy merges, or your soul could be trying to protect you and guide you as you handle whatever is happening around you. Mm, interesting thought, wasn't that? I love when I think, say things in my head and I don't even know what I'm going to say. Um, can those strong nudges develop into an awakening experience? Yes, they can, Ellie. They absolutely can. Because what happens is we start getting these messages and maybe, you know, think about like most of my people watching here probably have some awareness of the soul, of guidance, of spirit, this kind of thing. But if I was talking to a, or we're talking to a different audience, uh, one who is not aware of these things, right? But if I said something to them about, um, do you ever see the numbers 1111? I bet you like a quarter of the room would raise their hand right away because they are getting a message, which I'll talk about in a sec. So they could be getting a message then we start to people will start to notice like synchronicities and coincidences they start to notice these things and they think huh what is happening what you know so people who are not spiritually aware all of a sudden things are happening and they get curious we are living in a strange time as I've talked about many a time and this whole consciousness shift everything that's happening and our vibrations are raising whether or not we want them to but a lot of people are waking up to a new understanding so if we get these nudges, we kind of want to explore it a little bit. It's really kind of interesting. Um, Meridel, why do people procrastinate these nudges? Uh, first off, it's cultural programming, conditioning, that kind of thing, to not pay attention to that. But part of it, it's some level, there's a fear inside of us, you know, fear of making a mistake, fear of doing the wrong thing, fear that um, it's not right, you know, I shouldn't trust it. It's that self-doubt that's ingrained in so many of us. So that's part of it. But the more we can open up to it, the easier it becomes to pay attention to those nudges. Lots of times when we're learning about intuition, we want, you know, little exercises to practice. And I'm not going to give you exercises to practice. I'm going to tell you different ways to become more aware so that you can notice. Once we get into the flow of something and we have success, it becomes easier the next time. So, for example, for those of you who are interested in mediumship work, you know, when we're doing mediumship work in the very beginning, when we're first learning or the first few years, even when we get a no and somebody says that's not right, our, our immediate reaction can be, uh oh, I'm wrong and immediately doubt ourselves. 
But with time and practice, and we have more and more yeses, we start to trust ourselves. And even if we get a no or something's not quite right, we kind of can check back in with ourselves and trust what's happening. So the more success we have, the easier it becomes to trust. The more times you notice that you are getting a message and the, all the different ways I'm going to show you tonight, um, once you notice all of those different ways, it will be like a little game. You'll sit there and go, oh, wait a minute, I just noticed this, okay? And you'll see, and you'll start to really feel it. And you'll, you'll know, because there's definitely a different feeling, okay? So let's see, let's go to, well, we talked a little bit about repetitive thoughts, right? Let's talk about the repetitive words, the numbers and songs. So we might hear a word or phrase repeated in our head over and over. Same thing, you know, like writing the book thing, over and over. Sometimes people actually hear a voice talking to them, saying something to them, and it might be a word, it might call their name, it could be something. So you're not crazy. It's just whatever happening is you're not crazy. So years ago, I was going to do a lecture in church and I didn't know what to talk about. And I was thinking about it, thinking about it and trying to make it happen, right? I was doing the thinking and I was just relaxing. And all of a sudden I realized I had been hearing the same phrase over and over and over and over. I had noticed it, but not noticed it. I wasn't aware, I wasn't paying attention. And what I was hearing, and eventually I heard, um, clearly, God speaks to those who wait. And it took me a minute to realize that, oh, my soul was actually giving a message about what to talk about. So God speaks to those who wait. And I thought, well, that's interesting. That's not a phrase I would ever use. Of course, I had to Google it, and it's in the Bible. So that was fun. So we'll hear things over and over. Now numbers, right? How many people see numbers, right? We say in my house, 1111, make a wish, you know? It's kind of like a manifestation number in my house. So we see numbers. And so people who may or may not be aware will start to notice this. So what does it mean? So 11 stands for typically, you know, intuition, sensitivity, and awareness. Okay, number threes, everybody loves threes, right? We want 33, you know, or three, and it stands for harmony, uh, wisdom, understanding the divine, you know, and that goes back to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is how I learned it in Catholic school many, many, many years ago. So that divine number. So these, when we look up and see a number in front of us, or we hear a number, and then we Google it or check what the interpretation or meaning has been given, we might see that there's a message there for us. Um, something to remember, something to think about, to see. It might just be a simple reassurance for you. Today, just today, I was walking on the beach and I kept hearing the song True Colors by Cyndi Lauper. And it was another one of those things where I'm walking on the beach and I hear the, the song, but I'm not really thinking about it. And one of my good friends said to me years ago when I said something about hearing songs in my head, she goes, do you think you're getting a message? I'm like, oh, right, of course. So, and then when I'm thinking about the true colors, the words I kept hearing were, I see your true colors shining through and that's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors are beautiful like a rainbow. And I realized as I was walking and hearing this repetitively in my head that it was a message for you. It was a message for all of you to be yourself. Let your true colors shine through. That you are loved. That you shouldn't be afraid to be you and let your life and love shine through. When I got it, I was like, oh, and right away, when you get a message and you recognize it as, as being important, you recognize it and you understand it, I was like, oh, of course, this makes sense. You know, we can't be aware 99% of the time. Really, I don't think we can, you know, and I can get distracted. You know, I'm working on a radio show or a workshop planning or something, and I've got that playing in my head. So sometimes my soul has to work a little bit harder to get messages through to me because my mind is someplace else. And so that's when I will hear the repetitive things over and over until I get it. My soul doesn't give up and neither does yours. They don't give up on us. So another way, one more way you get messages, Animals, right? How many people see animals all the time? 
we see certain animals. So look up the animal and see the animal totem. What is the meaning? What does it symbolize? It could be a message. It could be an affirmation. You're on the right path. A reassurance. To keep going. You're good. Or maybe it'll tell you that there's a change coming and maybe you need to go in a different direction. So when you get that feeling, that message, and you recognize it as a message, your whole body, it's like your energy just changes. In our physical humanness, we are like you know, scattered, we're all over the place, we're thinking too much. But when you get the message and you really get it and you see it, you understand it, your energy slows down, you feel calmer, you feel grounded, you've got that factual feel coming in. Okay? Okay, now I'm, com I'm checking um, the comments, our true colors, yes. Okay, oh man. Uh, I gotta scroll back up again, sorry. It went really fast on me. Look at these. You guys are, I love your, your numbers you guys are getting. Um, feathers, right? Uh, that's good, 444. Four, four. Uh, yes, and I'm assuming you guys have looked these up. 112, one, there's that word harmony. 222, 333, three, three, every hour. I see my birth date all the time. I love it so much. It makes me become aware of spirit. And that's part of it too, right? We see these numbers. And if we're more aware and more conscious, we're going to go, oh, thank you. You know, and I saw uh, Wayne Dyer years ago, and he said that um, we get messages all the time, of course. And he says, if you look on your money, it says, in God, we trust on everything. He goes, you pick up a penny off the ground, and lots of times we have coins and things like that are um, we uh, attribute to spirit telling us they're around us. But he says, you pick it up and it says, in God we trust. So every time you pick something up, you can remind yourself, in God we trust. Now you can call the God energy, whatever you want to call that, the universal energy, the divine energy, whatever. Um, but it does affirm to us that there is an energy around us that speaks through your soul. And the key word here, in our soul, in the divine, we trust we want to trust when we get these messages these numbers it's just another reminder for us that we are guided and keep trusting uh, Cindy says you heard that song just this afternoon isn't that funny I haven't heard that song in years I, it was so funny that it just popped into my head like that there was a medium at Lilydale who used to uh, give messages with songs all the time she would sing a song to them and then give her the give them the message and oh that's right i'm seeing colors in you tonight you, shannon you are like helping me out when i'm in channeling mode i have no logic brain so thanks yeah isn't that interesting oh huh, clever i tell you spirit knows what it's doing i just talk um yes songs julie's talking about songs connecting with spirit with songs music is so important and it is the same thing right not just a song playing in my head but i'm in my car and i hear a certain song and i think of somebody who's on the other side or it's a song that just inspires me in some way today um my newsletter that went out was i am ready and it was talking about our someday list you know how we have this list that someday i'm going to do this and then someday never really happens so i talked about that in my newsletter today and how important it is to listen to those messages from someday so what is on your someday list what do you want to do those are messages from your soul to help you create an even better life. And while I was doing this, I was motivated to just Google. Literally, I just Googled someday. That's all I did, Google someday. And this song popped up called Someday, and I think it was One Republic, if I'm remembering correctly. It's a great song. I am so gonna post it for you guys. It was a wonderful song about someday when I grow up, someday when I'm older, someday this, someday that. It was just beautiful. So you can get messages from different songs as well. Like what were the chances that song was gonna pop up? What were the chances I was going to get on there? I was led to that. My soul guided me in that direction. Um, Amanda, that's awesome. I asked my guys to show me turtles when I'm on the right path. I've seen them pop up randomly. That is awesome. Uh, my heart is like a truck. Ooh, I don't know that song, Samuel. <laughs> Music is always in your head. Crows. Animals come to me, earth messages, absolutely, absolutely. And this like scrolled up on me again. Uh, pelicans of peace. <laughs> Music brings me peace. My daughter passed, she leaves me dimes. I don't know what 234 means, but I definitely look it up. I'm a big fan of Googling and seeing what shows up because um, I can't remember everything, of course. Um, 
Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. How do I know it's my soul telling me what's needed is not coming from a different space? Marcy. Yes, I'm going to you. Is it Marcy? Macy. Sorry. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? I can't read apparently when I'm channeling land either. So Macy, how do I know it's my soul telling me what's needed and not coming from a different space? Right? How do we know? How do we know? Now we've talked about there's a different feeling. You have a feeling here. Um, I tie your soul and your heart in together because your soul is love as well. So I put them together. Um, we want to make sure that we're not attributing fear or worry. Sometimes when we want to get more intuition and develop that more, we try to make things happen. We try to get the answer we want and we must work hard to stay centered and calm in the stillness so the message can come through unencumbered without crap in the way. So you will always know when your soul is speaking to you because it's going to feel Right. So let's talk a little bit more. I'm going to kind of jump ahead in my thoughts here um, on more about what this feels like. Okay. Um, I'm going to make a note on my notes because I know I'm going to be having to come back to this next week. And I want to make sure I, I don't repeat myself too much. Okay. That's where I got to there. Okay. We want to be aware. Self-awareness is key. We must be aware. We need to be aware of the feeling we have in everyday life versus the feeling we get when we are in meditation or stillness or being mindful. And I bet but most of you have can delineate that feeling, can't you? You know, it's a different feeling when you're in the meditation, when you're in stillness, or even in the midst of something where you're totally immersed and focused on it. That's a different feeling, right? Everyday life is more hectic, more busy. We're rushing about, we're thinking. Okay, so remember, thinking is humanness, feeling is soul. Okay, that's going to help. When you are aware of what you feel like when you are stressed out, overwhelmed, or fearful, those kinds of things, you know how that feels. Your whole body constricts, okay? When you're in the zone, when life is going well, everything feels wonderful. Your body feels differently, your energy feels differently. Your mind is working in a different way. Okay, so there's that's how you can really start to tell. Our body gives us messages nonstop. It's always giving us messages. So when we're in that flow, we're open, we're confident, the energy makes our bodies feel good, we stand up taller. When we're stuck in the external, our jobs, worries, stress, all that stuff, our body constricts and tightens up. We lean over, we crunch together. What we can do with this self-awareness, now here's the thing, right? If you know what it feels like to be in your soul's energy, you can make yourself, if you will, get back there. You catch yourself stressed out, worried, overwhelmed, anxiety, etc. Um, and you want to have more of the soul feeling? Then you can remember some time that maybe uh, a previous time when you were in the zone and things were flowing. Maybe you remember a time where you were really experienced a deep love for someone or something. You know, you can feel that and step into that energy. Uh, you, you can just intend to do this. Um, you can think about a time you trusted yourself and you remember what it felt like and you can consciously intentionally step into that energy which is going to get you into the flow so your soul you'll be in your soul's energy so you can make this happen you can make it go it's amazing how that is so the more you recognize when the messages are coming through the easier it becomes to get back into that space i don't know if i answered that totally for you macy um <laughs> Allie says, I found a penny in the exact same spot where my boss sat the next day after he transitioned. How cool is that? I tell you, spirit always wants to get through. Okay, Jennifer says, I saw my favorite bird, a killdeer, literally run in front of me today as I was driving. You saying animal totem just now made me look it up. It says, a precocious little bird who runs into new experience with his eyes wide open. I have an interview tomorrow for a new job. Maybe it's a sign. Ooh, yes, and it's a sign to make sure you keep your eyes wide open. 
Make sure you're aware and you're paying attention to all the facts, paying attention to how you feel while you're there as well. Pay attention to the energy. Pay attention to your reactions and responses to things. And I know you're probably going to be a little nervous because it's an interview, but that's okay. So eyes wide open. Make sure you're paying attention and you're aware. Um, I love it. That's a nice message. Um, Yes, and Lisa says, Mom leaves me a feather. If I have an important decision to make, she gives me a white feather in the oddest places to let me know it was the right decision. <clears throat> Spirit is amazing, isn't it? It is amazing. Uh, how can I deal with family drama? Who was that? That was Connie. Okay, Connie, I didn't talk to you yet today, did I? I did write down Zena, though. Um, uh, family drama. Okay, so here's the thing. So, Connie, in your soul, hmm, you're pretty sensitive, aren't you? So, you probably have empath abilities and you're definitely sensitive. And so, when the family drama and you long for peace, of course, who doesn't, right? Especially in drama. But this is a part of you. And <laughs> you'll have to tell me, Connie, if this is, is right, because um, there is this feeling of you trying to accommodate other people. I would call it people-pleasing. Um, and having spent a lot of your life doing that, which is very normal and natural for an empath to do, because we can read the room, we know what people need, we want them to feel better. So um, there is this feeling around you of of that okay so the way out of this for anybody not just you but anybody who is struggling with drama or stress or just feeling crappy um we must must do the best we can to stay secure in our truth of our soul spend time in that stillness okay um, this doesn't mean you have to meditate hours a day to connect with your soul you don't have to you know it, it can be simply done with a few breaths and the more you do it the easier it becomes of course so we want to be as strong as possible in your truth in your soul in your energy so that you are unperturbed by other people's dramas if people are trying to get you to choose a side back up yourself and get out you don't want to do it you just don't want to do it so anytime somebody tries to get you to choose sides your soul is like nope don't do it just don't and with those abilities because you have the empath and sensitivity and you do like to make things better for people you've got to remember your soul also says you have to take care of yourself and you have a really beautiful light, Connie. It is so strong and so bright, and you really do want to be there for people and help. So it kind of makes you feel like you're in a bind. Like, how can I help but not get involved and entangled, right? So we just want to um, lean more into taking care of your own energy and dismissing the family drama. Okay, sometimes they have to work it out themselves and you don't have to be involved, you know, even if it's, for example, your own kids. Um, <laughs> she says, that's what I've done. I'm the black sheep now. Go, girl. You just keep being you. I've, I talked about this, I think, last week. When we make a change, uh, we act differently. We do things from a different perspective. Uh, you know, if you want to live more from your soul, then we might, you know, have some action steps we try to do or whatever. And we make this change. People, family, friends, um, they don't like when we change. And so then what do they do? Because they're kind of fearful of it. They attack the people who are changing. And you may be doing everything in your power to be as loving, kind, and spiritual as possible. Possible, and they don't see that part all they see is you've made a change and they don't like it so now they're gonna attack you so you stay secure in yourself as much as possible you do not have to fix other people's problems you don't okay Connie well that was fun okay I don't know where it went can you interpret messages from the soul the wrong way the soul will definitely repeat messages to get you back on track as humans, our hazard, if you will, is if we get a message, lots of times it's some part of ourselves, uh, not the soul part, another part, um, wants a certain message. And so again, we might try to influence it. 
So, uh, you know, for example, I'll use the example of whoever it was earlier who said the, the um, Jennifer, I think it was about the the bird, you know, going in eyes wide open. And so if she really wants this job, she's definitely going to be like, oh, that's a message. I'm going to get the job. It could be. And it might not be too. We don't know for sure, but that's the message. And the message could also be something like we talked about, her eyes wide open. Okay. But it also said going into new experiences. So there's something about this. And so you kind of have to feel it out and see, you know, and um, with that awareness, that's, it really helps, you know, if you look at it from all different angles. And likely that if we're totally reading it wrong, uh, the soul definitely is going to give you another message. Absolutely. Okay, good, Connie. Um, let's see, secure in the self. They don't like the change. They're not to be in, meant to be in our next chapter. That is so true. Stay in your lane. I love it. Um, okay. Lisa, if you get messages from soul or spirit, it changed on me again. I think you said, oh, there it is. Okay. If you get messages from soul or spirit in picture form images, should we go by what we feel the interpretation is or a gut feeling for the interpretation? It would depend because our soul definitely communicates through all sorts of other things, you know, which I don't think I'll be talking about at all tonight, but I think we'll just have to continue this next week. Um, so if you get a picture of something, we want to make sure we're paying attention to how it feels too. Okay, so let's see. Uh, I can't think of anything offhand. Um, when we feel the interpretation, like gut feeling. Well, feeling and the gut feeling should be pretty much the same here. So should we go what we feel the interpretation is? Okay, so let's say you see a symbol, uh, uh, a picture of a Christmas tree. <laughs> Funny one. Okay, say you see a picture of a Christmas tree. Now, what normally we would say is Christmas. If you like Christmas, it's a positive thing. If you have bad Christmas experiences, it may not be a positive thing. So we may not know exactly what it is, but when you see it, it maybe it's in a dream or it just pops into your head in a meditation or something. So if you see it and you think, oh, that's great, then explore the feeling underneath because it was a positive reaction to what you saw. So same thing if it's a negative reaction, you explore what's underneath. Why are you feeling the way you're feeling? What's going on with that? Okay, then I, if, if it's just a vision like that and we don't have other information coming in with it, then we must definitely go with the interpretation uh, that feels most like the gut intuitive feeling. And remember, that's gonna come in with facts very straightforward, no emotions with the message. You might have the emotion after, but with the message, no. It could also mean, so say you see it and you really don't know what it means. You know, you see a Christmas tree and you're like, I don't know, you know, I'll just remember it. So you just remember it. You go about your day, it's July and you're driving down the road and all of a sudden you see a sign for a Christmas tree um, uh, shop where you can go buy Christmas trees, uh, like a farm or whatever. So you see that and you think, well, that's interesting. Why is that there? And maybe you slow down a little bit and then all of a sudden a deer runs across the road right in front of you. And that was enough to slow you down. And you didn't even know what the message was, but it was guidance from your soul. Could be that. Or it could be that there's something in that place that you want to check or something. But the messages will keep coming back. I went round about and bound about on that for you, Lisa, and I'm not even sure it made any sense whatsoever. So anyway, there's that. So the, you want to feel it. Remember it. And remember how you felt, remember what it is, and see. I remember hearing this great story, and this is sort of off track, but not, um, with Joe Scheel, um, a medium who used to be at Lilydale. And he did a reading with somebody, and he draws spirit, and he drew this spirit, and the family did not recognize the spirit. And that was kind of weird, because Joe's really good, and that's highly abnormal. But he was like, well, I don't know. Here it is. Take the picture with you. And so they took the picture with them. And lo and behold, it was the waiter they had at the restaurant they ate at the next day. The spirit on the other side was showing that to say kind of like, I know what's going to happen tomorrow. Check this out. You know, playing games with them. So you never know what the vision could be if you get the vision. 
Okay. Anyway, I went off off track on you guys. Oh, good. It made a little sense to you. I'm glad it did because after a while, I don't even know what I was saying at all. Um, yes, definitely. So the thing is, what the soul is always sending us messages in so many different ways. Okay. And I've got more ways to tell you about, which I can do next week and we'll just have a part two of this and i'll do more soul readings because i really wanted to make sure i did the soul readings this week i didn't do as many last week as i thought i was going to elise how do you discern between messages from your soul and your spirit team well here's my thought on that elise my thought is that the spirit team is coming through your soul so like in a way your soul is the the point person i think they call it um so i think your your spirit team comes through your soul now that doesn't mean that you're not going to get messages you know sometimes when i'm writing and doing automatic writing or inspirational writing um i don't consciously say to myself i'm going through my soul i just know i'm getting the information it's coming through but I'm so used to doing that that it's easier, you know, for me than maybe other people who don't have as many experiences. Yes, like they work together, right? Yes, Fran, you have a reading with Joe planned for November. Oh, that will be so much fun. He's an amazing person, just wonderful. And then I see you before that. So that's how much fun is that? Um, yeah, it's amazing. So our souls definitely... Um, they're always guiding us. If you learn nothing else from anything I've said tonight, your soul is always guiding you. What I would suggest between now and next week when I finish this uh, conversation with you, what I would suggest is to start kind of being more aware of how you're going about your day. And I don't want you looking like, oh, was that a message? Was that a message? I don't want that. I want it more of setting an intention that you're just going to become aware and you want to notice. You want to notice whatever nudges feelings repetitive thoughts if you start seeing numbers more or songs or or animals or those things and just pay attention and see what you notice there's lots of ways you know our our souls speak to us we've got dreams and symbols and and we've got the feelings and the the um the body messages and all of that stuff so we've got lots of different ways so just pay attention and just see play with it because it would be so much fun if you could come back next week and you tell me you know what you noticed you know what your soul's messages were for you um, and you can always of course we want to intend to hear those messages but make sure you just stay open and trust the more you trust the easier it becomes for you to trust that your soul's messages are coming through yes okay i suppose i better be stopping talking so definitely check out my reimagine your life in person retreat preseason in lilydale june 2nd through 4th it's amazing so transformative life changing and we are going to be doing all sorts of fun things there we're going to do some aura stuff and different than last year so if you went last year it'll be a little bit different there um and we're going to do some soul stuff we're going to do some healing and we're going to do greg's going to do a past life regression with the group on saturday afternoon going to be so much fun and I'm going to give some personal guidance uh, Saturday nights as well uh, so that you uh, can ask whatever you want personal or otherwise and uh, I'm going to be doing that so it's going to be fun so check it out on my website ColleenVanderZyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com same place that works works for me so thank you so much and we will um, <laughs> we will do this uh, again next week and I'll just keep talking about the soul and you come with all your questions and I'll keep answering them as best I can. I'm sure I didn't finish everything. I never did get back to you, Zena. I circled it. So remind me next week because I did want to talk about that. Um, and I also wanted to get back into the grief thing too because grief is wild. So I'll circle that too. Okay, you go. You guys have a wonderful week and I will see you next week. Bye.